Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest today is super host Steve Sear, the subject of Deke Castleman's book, Whale Hunt in the Desert. We've asked our listeners for questions for our host, and we're going to put several of those to Steve today. Steve Sear, welcome to Gambling with an Edge. Hey, it's nice to be back, guys. I've been too long, actually. It's been a couple years, I think. It has. We agree. We, you can be here next week, too, if you like. All right. <laughs> and I like podcasts. It's a bigger audience. I think last time we were on uh, AM radio. Yes. Um, it, was, it was also podcasted, but this, okay. is, this has advantages. Um, some hosts are salaried. Some hosts are paid on a theoretical or actual losses of their players. Does it? Should it matter to the player which kind of host he has? And if it should, how does the player find that out? Well, the politically correct answer is no. Of course, it it, uh, doesn't matter. But the real answer is it does. I'm actually currently both and have been both. So that's a good question, whoever asked that, for a guy like me. Um, I'm currently a a salaried employee at the Palms, uh, the new Palms. We can talk about that later, how amazing it's going to be. And I'm also a licensed junket rep. Uh, different places around the country and and out of the country. So the one nice thing about if um, you deal with a licensed junket rep, we're paid on theoretical, like you said, up to 16%. And two things happen. If I'm only paid on theoretical, I actually want you to play good. And I don't want you to be drunk and sloppy and lose $10,000 in 20 minutes because I need you to play longer. If you win, what happens? You bet more usually. You play longer. Hence, higher theoretical. Steve makes more money. Okay. I'm a property host. I want you to blow the 20 grand in 20 minutes. Okay. (laughs) Then it's easy. And I comp you 10 to 15% of loss and I don't worry about it. I mean, everybody says, you know, you need theoretical, but let me tell you when the comps are high and the guy wins a little, the bosses aren't as happy. It's, it's just human nature. I mean, we can argue all day about you can, you don't put theoretical in the bank. You know what I mean? So I would, to answer that question simply, is uh, a junket rep or a guy on theoretical is probably going to have your back more in this jurisdiction. In California, I'm only paid on loss. I, I, I don't want you to play 20 hours. I, I need you to lose because I get 10% of loss. So it depends on the jurisdiction. But in Nevada, you want a guy on Theo, for sure. You mentioned the Palms. Tell us about that. Uh, well, if you haven't been to the Palms lately, like, I mean, lately, like in the last six weeks, you're in for a big surprise. I mean, uh, Station Casinos, uh, the Fertitas, or I would say Frank because he's really the, the boss, uh, bought it for $312 million. They're putting $622 million into it. Uh, I started April 12th. Walls come down every day. They're spending $90 million. This is all in the paper, so it's not like big secret. $90 million, you guys, on the pool. No pool for another year. When it's open, it'll seat 6,000. It'll have a dome like Texas Stadium. Year-round day club. It's going to be the coolest pool. Come in now and you're going to see a $6 million uh, Damien. Is it Damien Hurst? I don't want to say the artist's name wrong. But $6 million shark in the center bar. The old ghost bar is now called Apex. Uh, The old nine restaurant is called Scotch 80 millions of dollars worth of scotch in there and ironically it has nothing to do scotch 80 has nothing to do with scotch it's where they grew up in a section in las vegas here called scotch 80 i don't know if you're familiar with that kind of section you know like there's summerland spanish trail there's scotch 80 i had never heard of scotch oh yeah really cool but i'm telling you it the staff uh it's a lot of beautiful people uh there's four new restaurants that are going to come online in the next few months check out the palms it's amazing and that's why i went back and perfect time in my life too now my daughter's in college and i wanted to be on a team again actually i um you know i really like the buffet there i'm really impressed it is not like a stations casino um you know it reminds me of when mandalay bay opened and my reaction was boy this really doesn't seem like a circus circus property right because lest we all forget it was circus circus 
you know. Uh, and we love them, but it is it, what it is. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, so, a- yeah, Ace is it, called All You Can Eat, and um, I compare it to a Wicked Spoon, except it's uh, a third of the price, which is really good. So Wicked it's Spoon amazing. is at the Cosmopolitan. Correct. And, uh, it, yeah, I don't even think, that's why I like Ace, All You Can Eat, because Buffet really doesn't do it justice. I mean, you've been there. I mean, it, put it this way, in the dessert section. You pick the kind of cookie you want. I want a peanut butter cookie, and then I want that ice cream, and they make you an ice cream sandwich right there. I mean, it's pretty cool. All the presentation is amazing. All right. I um, I wish stationed um, welcome my patronage, and then I would check it out a lot more. Well, and you can, you can, well, yeah, we don't want you on blackjack, brother. <laughs> well, blackjack, they love oh, me. I mean, video yeah. poker. They, uh, yeah, they yeah, have yeah. a problem yeah. with that. Right, right. My bad. Um. Casinos are now expected to know where the money their players bring to the casino has come from. Does this affect you? And how do you go about vetting big players and their source of revenue? Yeah, it's called a source of funds. And it wasn't a rule made up by the casinos. It was a rule made up by um, the wonderful federal government. And uh, just like uh, our president wants to vet everybody that comes across the border, we now are really, really, really required to know the source of funds. Um, it's made life tougher. Uh, you know, a lot of people, just because you come to town with a lot of money doesn't mean you're a drug dealer and doing something illegal. You could be. But most of them aren't. Maybe you're just a trust fund baby or you got an inheritance or you've owned a business over the years and you've put some money on the side and you want to come gamble it. I got to find out. We we used to just don't ask. You know, uh, if if it's over 10,000 in 24 hour period, we have to do what's called a currency transaction report. Even if you go buy a car and you have over 10,000 cash in 24 hours, it's not a secret. We do a CTR. But, you know, a guy comes with five, 10 grand. Hey, we copy his driver's license. It's active. We don't have to ask. Now we got to ask. So people do take it personal. And this is my effing money. And, you know, it's in my savings account, you know. And so there's a lot more questions on a credit application now. It used to be, say a guy puts up 5000 front money or 10000 No problem. Copy his driver's license. It's your cash. You don't want to walk around with it. You want to draw markers off of it. And it helps me comp you based on what you have in the cage. Now i got to say, Bob, where'd that money come from? What business were you in? How long were you in that business? It has to make sense to me or I have to fill out another report called a SAR suspicious activity report. So I need to like your answer. And I don't like being a detective. I'm a casino host. And they put you in the middle of this. Yeah, it's not, uh, absolutely. I, because I represent the gaming licensee and there's been a lot of... Um, I know if you ever talked about on your shows, you know, the Venetian, I, I don't know what the numbers were. Didn't they get fined millions of dollars because they weren't doing the correct CTRs as a few years ago? The Mirage. I, I thought that was MGM. I thought it was MGM Grant. But. Okay. Or, or maybe all of the above. <laughs> right. Okay. Listen, so- when these laws first came into being, now I'm going back 20 years ago or something when this first started, I would have bosses come up to me and say, look, you're, you're in 9,000. But if you do money plays, you can do another ten thousand, and it's Ooh. not a CTR. I mean, they would for tell him you stuff to coach like that you. Back that then. is you know? a big fine. Oh, I know. Nowadays, wow, that's how you get fired. Yeah, okay. yeah. Things have changed a lot. But now the other thing is Jeff Sessions. The attorney, well, they, they would tell you that on the game. Oh, that's they would crazy. tell. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they would say, and you can go do another ten thousand on deposit. That's a separate transaction. And maybe another ten at the sports book. <laughs> and right, maybe go yeah, buy right, chips. Yeah. Now you've got ten, twenty, you know, there's a lot of different games. Yeah. Yeah. But um so the attorney general just came out within the last couple of days saying that you know, Obama had lowered the ability of them to confiscate cash with no reason. But Jeff Session has just come out and said, no, no, we want to loosen this and let the police steal people's money easier again. So I'm wondering, do you tell players, look, if you want to bring 50 or 100,000, wire it so we don't have these problems? Because uh, Yeah, I usually use the line, look, I don't want you to trouble with that much cash, especially going through TSA and everything now. Do you want that hassle? Just wire it. That way the bank does their report and we can legally wire it back to where it came from. It just makes everything squeaky cleaner, and it's the bank's responsibility to know where it came from. Right, then you don't have to get involved I'm not on the hook that. as much, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, but there's a vetting process, and we have, you know, a staff that that's what they do now. Obviously, I'm lucky, too, because a lot of my players are really well-known, 
So, you know, I had one player, and I won't say his name, but when they asked for source of funds, he wrote, Google me. <laughs> and he's a pretty popular dude, so everybody just laughed, and, you know, that was fine. Uh, like, we know where Michael Jordan gets his money, you know, and we know where Larry Flint gets his money, you know, that part's easy. But if they don't know, they've got to ask. But hypothetically, assume I'm a, an illegal bookie somewhere, but I convince you that I'm a trust fund baby, and... Later, after I've won or lost some big number, the truth comes out. Does that get back to you? No, as long as I put in good faith effort to find out and ask. I mean, you know, a lot of times, you guys, it's on the fly. It's one in the morning on a Saturday. A guy comes in and wants to fire. He's got a passport or current driver's license and goes to the cage. I want to fill it out, but I don't say, you know, and the law's not like, oh, I can't take your money. I do everything I can to try to find out about you or run a central credit, which is like our Bible, and know how long you've been a player. And, you know, I can probably make a few calls and, hey, you're not new new you've been playing at caesar's for years and now you wanted to try the palms because we have a great new restaurant i mean that's legitimate so i don't have to put you through the ringer then there's other people in departments that a week later they might find out and i might the worst that happened is i call you and say mr d you know what we're going to pass on your future action you know and then we did the guy came in we did what we could you know, we, we don't stop you from gambling, obviously. And then we find out, hey, that there's some suspicious things here. We do the proper paperwork. And then we ask the player not to come back. We can come back, but don't gamble. Or don't play video poker. Uh, <laughs> or wire the money. Or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm allowed um, to play video poker. Just yeah. no benefits. Uh, right, right. No, no points. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I get points. Single points only. Yeah. No mail. No mail. Yeah, no sure. mail. Um, so if I, let's say I'm a big player that I haven't played at the Palms before, mm-hmm. and I want to come with fifty thousand and whatever, I'm going to uh, wire it, or so okay. that's not the issue at all. Gotcha. Am I better off coming in, playing for the weekend, and then contacting you about my trip, or am I better off ca- calling of you time. first and saying, "Hey, I want to put fifty thousand on deposit and come this weekend." To, well, ma- main reason is if you don't call to after the fact, you're going to wait in line at that front desk and get, uh, we don't have any crappy rooms anymore because it's all been remodeled, but you're going to get a standard room. If you call me in advance and I can do a little due diligence and verify that you are a good player around, the limo's going to pick you up. You're going to check into VIP. You're going to get front row tickets to the concert, and then you're going to get eight o'clock dinner. So, you know, after the fact, you get, I mean, you're going to risk 50 grand. You want to feel like a VIP. Call me ahead of time. Okay. Well, is that, is that true for the guy who and, and you know, five like, or 10 grand? Well, y- yes, that that's true for yeah anybody five grand and above. And, you know, it's really true because a, a player wants to be treated that way. And for him to try a new property, he's going to make a call. Unless he's really pissed off at his other place and just says, I'm going to a new place. That, that, and that's the hardest way to steal a player is they get comfortable. And it's not perfect, but they get this, 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 and this. Well, now you got to start new with me. But I'm at the level where I can make that decision, even if you've never played at the Palms, how to treat you right off the gate, you know. Do you use the central credit as a, uh, a Bible, so to speak, a source of information? Absolutely. Because, you know, everyone has to adhere and report to it. Even if it just doesn't say the amount you've played, it says preferred. And it says how many years. It's, it's like a resume. That's exactly what it is. It's a work resume. I know that Mr. Smith has had credit since 1996 at 20 clubs. He's never been late or stiffed anybody. If it does, it'll give me derogatories. I know he's never been a write-off. I know in his bank he keeps six figures. So, Your Honor, that's why I gave him 20000 at 3 in the morning. It really helps us because, you know, in the old days, I can't believe I'm old enough that I was around for that, but, you know, in the 80s, um, a lot of states, and especially our state for a while, didn't recognize gaming as a legitimate debt. And I was drunk. I didn't know what I was doing, sir. Well, you know, you've had credit in Las Vegas and around the country for 15 years. You've taken out hundreds of thousands in markers. You have plenty of money in the bank. You knew what you were doing. See, it, it safeguards us, you know. So that's what that's why we like it. If you make promises to a player based on an understanding that he's going to be playing a certain amount and he plays nowhere near that amount. Uh, 
What happens then? When the old days, uh, it doesn't happen to Steve Sear very often anymore because I'm, I'm pretty You don't take him out into the desert? <laughs> no, no, yeah, and beat him up? Uh, no. Uh, it does happen, and we'll take a shot just about with anybody once. Uh, second time, no way. But I tell you, like with me, I'm. Um, can we cuss on podcasts? Hell no. Okay. Oh, of course you can. I, I, yes. I was, I was going to say, you know, I, I uh, and I wear this with a badge of honor. I'm kind of king of the dipshits. You know, uh, <laughs> half the hosts in town don't like me, but the other half love me. King and of the I, dipshits. Yeah, I can find out from my boys, I don't care what casino you play in, how you play. And I'll make a few calls ahead of time and say, look, is this guy worth it? Is this guy a pain in the ass? Can I beat this guy? And you know what? If you play... Four, three, four hours a day and give me a shot at your money. I don't care if you win. Seriously, I'm going to comp you, you know, but just give you me a shot at the money. The, the bosses yeah. do, but Well, you no, don't. but yeah. like if you, let's say you come in Friday night, you're a $50,000 player and you, you win a quick 15 grand. You don't play the rest of the weekend. When you check out, I'm like, dude, I got to charge you for some of this. You play three, four hours a day, you check out, you still win. I'm comping everything. Give me a shot at the money. That's really what I want. If you win, good for you. You know, for every 10 of my players, Two or three win, six or seven lose, casino does fine. You can't have just one whale. You can't play Russian roulette. You're not kind of pregnant, you know. You want ten whales. Again, two or three are going to kick your ass, but the other six or seven are going to lose. We're fine. So you mentioned earlier that um, if they give you a shot at the money and they so they play a number of hours, that you're able to comp them 10 or 15% of their loss. Right, or 30% of theoretical. Okay, but um, I'm assuming that you're talking about sort of soft comps is it still Ooh, possible good. for you to give us like airfare and wow, that that's kind of a really stuff? good yeah you guys are seasoned yeah a soft comp is like a room and, and let's be honest and um, food yeah I, I love it when um well let's start at the first level for your listeners I, I love it when i walk by and players go well we're drinking for free dude you had a 180 eighty dollar budweiser your girl had a 60 dollar <laughs> gas of chardonnay yeah we're drinking for free i mean it's all smoke and mirrors bullshit right and we're playing with, hey they caught my room well you could have got the room on expedia for 69 dollars, <laughs> but you blew 1800 so we come to your room it's a made to clean it to us it's all smoke and mirrors when we sit down and say well you know bob that room you know it's 500 a night no it's 35 dollars for the made to clean it period and laundry we, we know our costs okay so that's why first what do we call them? room really soft cost drink soft cost food soft cost uh but now so many places are at least that, like when i was at the hard rock in the heyday we would really push um uh what was your uh, aj's and we'd really push pink taco we didn't push nobu why because that was dollar for dollar if you ate Nobu and had a $2,000 dinner, we had to pay Nobu $2,000 because he was a leasee and we built up for him, but we, you know, it got a lot of big players over. So Nobu was a hard cost. That was the last thing we offered. You know, you'd be a pretty good, you better blow 10 grand for me to comp you in Nobu. Pink taco. Yeah. 200 or the buffet. Yeah. I mean, cause how much can you eat? You know, so, so excellent question. So yeah, no, let's say a guy's a $10,000 player. That means he should bet 1% of that, about 100 bucks a hand. You know, don't put up 10 grand and go to the $10 table. You're never going to lose 10000 I want at least 1%, average bet 100 bucks. play three, four hours a day. I'm going to comp your room, food, and beverage, and standard, maybe a mini suite, and I'm going to give you up to 5% of that bankroll in airfare. So a $10,000 player comes from LA, I can comp him any place to it, win or lose, but he plays four hours a day, 100 bucks a hand. I can comp up to $500 airfare. You know, two tickets southwest. $168, boom. I copy the tickets, give him. So it's that, and that's a hard cost. That's real money out. Or if it's on credit, I'll do marker reduction. Guy comes in, lost 10 grand. Hey, why don't you send me 9,500 and we're square? That kind of thing. Pay me in 30 days. So, so you can get some hard costs at the $10,000 level. Um, I don't really deal with that lower level. That would be more for junior host we'll call it it doesn't mean that i don't want a ten thousand dollar player just as only so many hours in the day and i'm trying to focus on whales and, not and for minnows those guys for those no? guys who are salaried hosts right. um is there any um any reason they wouldn't want to give that up is there anything that it costs them to give it to you uh no no okay. not, not not at all and in in this jurisdiction um as a as a rep we don't mind if you're over comp because it doesn't i get 16 percent of theoretical regardless if you're over comped or not so that's why you have to keep your reps in check the dipshits again because we want to over comp you 
I want you to feel obligated to me. I want you to feel spoiled. I want you to only book with me because players take it personal. It's not Caesars didn't comp me. It's Steve didn't comp me. Steve used to do this for me. Now Steve does. It's not the property. The property is bullshit. They blame us, the right. host. Now, do you it's have a, discretionary comps? Absolutely. That- and At my level, for sure, for sure, for sure. And how does that? How does that? My, work? my bosses don't like that I have discretionary comps. And <laughs> in the book Whale Hunt in the Desert, there's the plug. I call some CFOs limp dicks in my past because they are. I mean, do you want to spend ten grand a month on a billboard that nobody sees, or give me an extra ten grand a month and I can wine and dine people at the new Scotch Eighty and 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 get new players? You might be a limo driver, but you give me information to get players. I mean, I need my moles. I need my you know. Again, every five thousand dollar player knows a fifty thousand dollar player. Every loser knows a winner. So sometimes I got to overcomp the little fish to get to the whales. You know, I'm a networker, and I, I lose. 20, so good- 25% of my database every year, you guys, because they're sick of gambling or they're broke or they're sick of Steve. The third one doesn't happen often, but it happens. So I got to constantly read, you know, 32 years. I only have, I have a few of my original whales, but the rest of them are broke or dead or don't gamble anymore. So you got to constantly be out there networking. So are those limo drivers or the, is that a good source oh, for you? Oh yeah. I, they know who they're dropping off at the Palazzo. I mean, I'm pretty sure because of Steve Sear at the airport now, it doesn't say their full name. Back in the 80s, 90s, I used to go out to the, this is in the book, I used to go out to the airport and write down names, you know, Caesar's Palace, Welcomes, Robert Dancer. Great. I know you're at Caesar's. I know you're with AJ, the limo driver that only drives to the mansion. I'm calling you a room. Hey, I heard you're in town. Bob, <laughs> come over for dinner, you know. Do you, uh, what about in the strip clubs? Do you have your moles in yeah, there too? Yeah, but, you know, so um, they're, they're not as good, and, and it's just like uh, the nightclubs, and I, I love the nightclub scene, but my guys are addicted to the tables. You know, the guy that goes to the nightclub, and, and that's why the other stereotype is, oh, you must get a lot of druggies. I can count on one hand in 32 years, the druggies. If you're all coked up or on ecstasy and you're out all night partying, I don't get my four hours a day. And, and that's how the job has changed. You know, my department at the Hilton in the 90s was 80% of the bottom line. Now my department's a third. It's a third gambling. It's a third hotel and convention. Sheldon showed us how you can be busy Sunday through Thursday. And it's a third nightlife. At the Palms, you know, 60% of the bottom line is not gaming. It's going to be nightlife and restaurants and fun. And, and I equate it to my parents. Not to get off the subject too much. My parents are from Salina, Kansas. Love them. When they used to come see me 25, 30 year, years ago, what did they do at McCarran? Well, we're waiting for the bags. Mom and dad were playing the slot machines. Now they want to go see Celine Dion because they play slots in Wichita. You know, when I started, I remember my mom was upset because I was supposed to go back and run the Howard Johnson Motel in Salina. And I said, no, I'm going to try this casino thing. It's another story with Michael Gaughan and my internship. And she said, well... I, I hope you like Las Vegas because the only other place you can even work is New Jersey, Steve. And I love my mom. I remind her of this all the time. The only place I can't work now, mom, is Utah and Hawaii. In my 30-year career, 46 states have legalized gaming. Kansas, Florida, I represent all, California. You know, so that that's why my parents want to see Celine Dion and go to the great restaurants. Or go see the Vegas Golden Knights and eventually the Raiders as opposed to just coming here to gamble. Sure. Our city yeah. survived. You know? I've heard about people who get full RFB like at Caesars because they blow ten or fifteen thousand in the weekend at the nightclubs and don't gamble. So do hosts handle those people well, or is that a it, separate okay. No, no. Um I hope to kind of create like a hybrid host where right now um <clears throat> let's say um you guys want to go to the pool and then you want to go to the nightclub and then you want to gamble. You need three hosts. You need one guy to get you the cabana at the rehab. So you can look at all the girls. You need another host to get you that booth in the nightclub where you're renting space. We can talk about that later. You know, <clears throat> we sell Sky Vodka for $450 that you can buy at Albertsons for 10 bucks. Okay, but you're renting space. You're five dudes. This this happens every night. Five guys are like, I don't want to buy a table, man. That's $1,000. Okay, you're five dudes. Go wait in line for an hour and a half because you're a dude. You're going to pay 40 bucks to get in, and then no tits and ass is going to talk to you because you're going to be at the bar. You got five guys. Each chip in $200. Now you got a 1000 Now you got a booth. Now pussy's going to come to you. 
Okay, we call. <laughs> now, and and but the bad thing is, I go don't drink the bottle right away. They each have a drink. The bottle's gone. Now they got to buy another one. Or a lot of times we do buy one get one. Okay, so you get two bottles for five hundred. It's still a ten dollars. You're renting space so the girls will come to you. So anyway, so and then you have a casino host. So I'd like to create a host or what I like about me is I can get you the booth in the club. I can get you the booth at the pool and I can get you a casino credit line and dice. So it makes me a little bit more valuable. Did I answer that? I kind of yep, rambled. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, your rambling is very entertaining and educational. This is good. Uh, the Palms, of course, is in Vegas, but sometimes you represent casinos outside the United States. How does representing players internationally differ from representing people domestically well like bahamar which is beautiful um i i represent there that's new by the atlantis there i depending on the player i get seven to ten percent of loss so big difference i'm not looking for the wise guy that plays craps and plays the don't and grinds away i'm looking for the guy that maybe has too much alcohol and fires away i want the guy that's going for fun not just to use it for comp. So that's the first thing on me on a personal note. The second thing that's tough is I can't be there. So I love the Bahamas, but, you know, you have to be a 90% native. So sometimes um, the service levels aren't like Vegas. Vegas is a 20 years ahead of everybody. And so it's tough as a host when you send your player there. The limo isn't there. Well, it's a 45-minute drive to Atlantis. He was supposed to get the two-bedroom suite. They have him in two standard rooms. His credit line that's supposed to be available isn't, and it's a weekend. And, you know, they go home at 5 o'clock. You know, don't show up there late. So, again, I mean, the service levels are, are, are the hardest thing international. I also represent the Hippodrome in London downtown. Now they're really good service, you know, so I really look for um, people that are really polished. And I also like places even outside of uh, Nevada that have Vegas guys. Like I have repped in uh, the Barona for years because when they opened and proposition one, a passed in 99, it was all Vegas guys that went there. So it was really polished. So I'd say that's the biggest fear is that in other property, you know, the game's on the square, but sometimes uh, they do some screwy rules at other properties. I mean, that's the great thing about Nevada. Everything's on the square. So internationally, are you ever getting involved with helping players get money in or out of the country? Um, yeah, word help is a scary word. Yeah, I, what, is, yeah, I, what does that mean? If, facilitate, if they need help facilitate. learning how to wire money, I mean, uh, yeah, that's I, easy. I, I usually try to pass the buck and let their cage personnel do it. It is tougher and tougher and tougher. Even in the Bahamas now, um, it better be from an American bank. And I'll tell you, in in America – we want money from an American bank, you know, and it's overseas and everything. It's just, it's so much paperwork. And I don't have to get involved with that. The cage does that, but, but it, they're making it tougher and tougher for sure. All right. We're talking to super host, Steve Sear. We're taking a brief break for a commercial message. We'll be back with Steve in just a moment. The South Point has more than 10,000 games returning more than 99%. This is more than anyone else has. The promotion in June is the 500,000 guaranteed big spin and win. Every Thursday in June at 8.15 p.m., 25 winners will get to spin the wheel. Wheel amounts are 2,000 free play, 5,000, 10,000, or 25,000 in cash. The average spin is $4,333. If everything goes to average, they will give out about $4,000 over the four weeks. What this means is that the last week they will keep calling five people at a time until they reach 500,000 or more. There will be a lot more people called on June 28th, but possibly a lot more people trying to get the money as well. I don't know if the odds will be any better for you or not, but uh, as of this broadcast, they've only had one week's of drawings and two dollars spots were hit. And so 125000 was given away. This is more than average. The average will be about 100 You may earn up to 1,600 entries a day uh, where you get one entry for video poker or four entries for every slot dollar coin in. And on Thursdays, you can earn the 1,600 before 8 p.m. and then another 1,600 after 9 p.m. They announce when the exact time to start your uh, earning entries begins. Uh, the promotion day is midnight to midnight. So you can arrive at, depending on how long it takes you to play 1600, 
you can arrive at 11 p.m. and play, and then after midnight, play at 1600 for the next day. We are approaching the next semester of free video poker classes. They will be on Tuesday noon this year, uh, beginning July 3rd. At videopoker.com, it's the best place to play lots of games. If you sign up for the gold membership, $8.95 a month or $79.95 a year, this allows you to get correction on most of the games. The game of the week is Hot Roll Poker. This is a 10 coin per line game where one hand in six, you get a multiplier. And the value of the multiplier is determined by a pair of virtual dice. So if the dice rolled a two and a five, for example, they add up the two and the five and you receive a seven X multiplier for the hand. The multiplier comes on the deal. Sometimes it comes on the draw, never both. There are no strategy variations for this game compared to the base game. And the hot roll feature is even money, meaning the dice roll adds no EV, but it does add variance and it does add fun. Before we get back to Steve Sear, our guest next week is tax expert Russell Fox. Among other things, we're going to be talking about how the tax bill that was passed by Congress uh, is going to affect uh, gamblers and especially W2Gs for non-professionals. If you have any other tax questions, please send them to us at gamblingwithanedge at gmail.com and we will consider having them on the show. Or I will... Uh post on our Facebook page um, asking for your questions and you can ask them right there as well. You can just respond on the Facebook page. All right, let's go back to Steve Sear. For players who don't treat you well, I've heard you're a champion boxer. (laughs) A killer senior citizen. Uh, Is this true? uh, It it is, and I appreciate the plug. Yeah, I um, started, uh, I've been a boxer, you know, ever since college, on and off. Um, and decided at age, let's see, 40, 41 to get my amateur license. And then we figured out that uh, the oldest Nevada amateur boxer to ever win was age 46. And um, on Fremont Street, Derek Stevens, who's a great guy, sponsored a fight. And we put a ring right in the middle of Fremont Street. And we had about 4,000 people. And little Steve, I broke the record. So I'm the oldest Nevada amateur boxer um, to ever be licensed and to ever win. My last fight was uh, October 4th, which was a little weird, you know, outside at the downtown event center after the terrible one October shooting. And, uh, and I won. So I, my next fight should be in September. Uh, I might have another little fight. Well, I've, I've had little fights called smoker fights this year, but you know, they're like 40 people when you go to a gym. If you get hurt, you call 911 as opposed to a big <laughs> fight where the ambulance and the doctor and Nevada Athletic Commission is there. And what's cool is my judges are the same judges that judge Floyd Mayweather. My refs are the same refs, Tony Weeks, that you've seen on HBO. It's the same officials. And they come to it, and I fight in a club series. I fought at the Cosmopolitan in a convention room where they had sofas around the ring. And so where I fight, it looks like a nightclub. Brooklyn Bowl puts a ring right in front of the stage, and you could be bowling, and there's boxing right there. And so <laughs> only in Vegas, yeah. And Derek Stevens now has done our last three or four in the downtown event center, which is wonderful. Uh, he puts a ring there, and what we usually do on my fights is piggyback. Like, say Friday night fights is going to be there on USA or HBO, where well, they have to set up usually on a Tuesday, Wednesday. So we'll fight Thursday. So we get the real ring, the real lights, and everything. And then uh, most people have ever fought in front of probably about 4,000. So we should mention your Twitter is at Steve Sear. At Steve C-Y-R Vegas. At Steve Sear Vegas is Twitter. And then if you want to have questions or uh, email me, it's my pleasure. Steve at SteveSear.com is the best to email for me. And, and uh, I try to answer them all. Right. And and so you post on Twitter whatever when you're going to be fighting. Correct. Right? If people Correct. want to go. Because yep. I would do that. Absolutely. Yeah. I used oh, yeah. To like, Anthony here has been to like three or four of my fights. So uh, I've When I first fighting. moved to Vegas, they used to have weekly fights at the Silver Slipper. And, uh, and the know. showboat in the yeah, 80s. Yeah. I went to the showboat in 83. Yeah, I saw all the, you know, I remember one night. And the fr- Silver Nugget. Yeah, Freddie Roach, Pepper Roach, Jerry Roach, all the Roach boys I remember fought on one card once. So it was kind of cool. Wow. Yeah. Casinos pay you and players tip you sometimes. I heard one host got a car once. <laughs> what? Um, 
What is this? Is there an amount that's officially expected, or does it improve future relationship? How does well, that work? Okay. Well, for the record, uh, regular casino hosts that are salaried, like myself, not Palms, we do not accept tips. Uh, we can take a gift. I think usually the rule, I have to look in the handbook, is like you can take like, a, let's say someone gives you a tie up to a $100 value. You know, obviously it's your birthday, a customer sends you a fruit basket, yeah, but we never take cash. And I can tell you this, if they try to give us cash on the floor, I'm always like, better for the dealer. So we are not supposed to take tips. And of course we never would. Wink, wink, wink. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I actually like the rule in that um and this is not made up just because a guy tips you, you don't really know him. Next thing you know, you feel obligated or you feel like a turd when he wants something you have to say no. You know, I think the perception you guys is, is as a casino host, I say yes all day. I say no 20 to 1 to yes. No, I can't get you more credit. No, I can't extend you. No, I can't give you more time. I have to dump those markers. No, I can't get you the penthouse. No, you can't have a private table. No, you don't get two extra tickets to the fight. No, I can't get you in the meet and greet to meet Santana tonight. You know, no, no, no. And players want, want, want. They're all kind of whores, okay? <laughs> they all want to lose a thousand, and I comp them a thousand. It doesn't work that way. You lose a thousand, I comp you a hundred dollars. You're not getting a great deal. It's the free drink again. You had an eighty dollar Budweiser, dude. You're gambling. You might win, but that so, was free Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but you know, it's, it's entertainment. So. um you know, your regular host, no, now when I'm a licensed junket rep, I can sit with the player, I can drink with the player, I can get drunk with the player. I'm not an employee. I'm a hired gun with my little license from the state of Nevada. Then it's a different situation. And then a lot of times guys want to, a lot of hosts will do this. Hey, let's go out and gamble. Well, like I can't gamble at any station casinos, period. And I would never even think of that now. But if a customer is in town and wants me to, go gamble with him at caesar's palace or the hard rock i can go and i like that we play craps together and you know if he's getting his ass kicked and i'm winning we shuffle money back and forth that part's fun and i enjoy that because i'm not uh, a gambler per se i like to uh, bet on sports and then i had a great time this year betting the knights and then going and watching them win i lost very few bets i had a big future bet by the way on them to win the stanley cup and yes i hedged so i did okay because <laughs> i'm a businessman but uh yeah so i'd say most players uh comp their host by taking them gambling because we watch it all the time so of course we want to you know you see the drunk guy that buys in for 500 dollars and wins ten thousand. like oh why can't that be me you know a lot of people win remember for every Hundred thousand that drops on a blackjack game. If we hold or win, I'm talking to you like you're in fifth grade. Fourteen percent or fourteen grand. We had a great day. We got to drop a hundred grand, and we forecast to win fourteen percent. And we don't a lot. It's more like eleven or twelve percent. You know. So remember, we, we have to have a, and that's my job: drive, drop, drive volume. You know, if I drive a millions in volume, hey, it's up to the casino and operations to hold it. If the game's on the square, the math is there, we will hold, you know. So that's why if you give us a shot at the money, we still comp you. You don't have to lose to get comped. You have to gamble. But you get comped better if you lose. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no getting around that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say you represent a big player, and over time you and the casino figure out he's a winning player. Does this create an awkward situation for you? Yes. Uh, two reasons. Um, there used to be called, uh, the black book was called the Griffin book. It's not a secret, I don't know if you know it. And we had, I call them bleeders. A guy wins. The black book and the Griffin book are totally different. Okay, you're yeah. right. You're right. Okay. Okay. Um, you're right. But yes, the Griffin book The Griffin lumped book. winning players in with cheaters. Oh my God. I, I know hundreds of players I've beat out of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars that are in the Griffin book because one shift they got lucky and some old pit boss was like, no, we don't want him. So, so that's the bad thing. But if a guy really is a advantage player, you know, they've counted down with him. He varies his bet. It's not worth it. I use, I'm, I do not have a lot of operations experience and I don't, uh, act like I, I do. So I love the guys in the pit and I love the guys in surveillance. And I am one of the hosts that call and say, can I beat this guy? 
and they'll say, Stevie, keep him coming, or he's too sharp. And then, yeah, we back him off. We reserve that right. You know? But does that put any heat on you? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I told the guy, come in, put up 50000 play 1%, 500 and for four hours. And especially if it's first or second trip, and I know he's lost at other places, you know, it really is about the history of the player. You know, you, you got a lot of new young players coming out all the time, and they've played on the internet. Players are so much more educated now. No one's splitting tens anymore. You know, they know to hit 12 against the 12, you know. So the, the players are so much more educated and they want promo chips up front and comps up front. It's made my job a lot harder because players are such whores. Yeah. Well, you know. uh, no, wait a minute. Uh, promo chips up front. Uh, tell us about that. How do we uh, get I hate promo them. chips? I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. Yeah, uh, but we love them. Well, yeah, yeah, but because first, we're of all, whores. first of all, remember, I'm only supposed to win, what, one or two bets an hour? Okay, and you bet $100 a hand and you want 1000 in promo chips? Great. So the next eight hours technically is free. Well, okay, but the that's promo chips much. are the kind that... I'm talk- when I say promo chip, I'm talking about play till you lose. A one-time oh, okay. chip, that's not a promo chip. Okay. That's a bullshit okay. chip. Well, it's still a 50% well, chip. It, or- uh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, 50%. If I give you 1000 like you should two, win five, though, five. So- <laughs> Okay, well, I'd rather give you one time than play till you lose. Sure. Okay, but for how, sure. How do we get them? <laughs> Just you keep asking don't. and whining. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, maybe if it's your birthday or something special. But he, he, I use a promo chip to get a guy over his first time. You're a Caesars player. You've been there for years. Why would I leave? Hey, I'll tell you what. Come over. I'm going to give you five grand to take a shot with me. I get him to move. But don't come over for dinner. you got to check in and stay here because where you stay is where you play a lot more. You know, So if you just come over for dinner, I'm not going to give you promo chips. But if you check out, establish your credit line, it's your first trip. I'll give you some promos, but, but I'm going to shake your hand and say, don't ask every time, you know, or once you play the first day, here's what I like to do with a guy. That's kind of a wise guy. I would say, I'll tell you what, go play. It's your first trip after two hours, whatever your average bet is. I'll give you that. Then every hour, whatever your average bet is average bet, 6,000. You just played two hours. I'll give you 6,000 promo chips. But I want you to go play an hour first or two hours first. I'll do a deal like that with a guy. Because what I don't want is he comes in with the promo chips and what happens? He catches lightning in a bottle, wins a quick 10000 and walks out the door. Then I get my ass chewed. Okay. But, hey, he just played a couple hours. His average bet was 6000 Give him 6000 You know, what I don't like is a guy wants big promo chips and he goes to, you know, starts betting 25 bucks a hand. You know, that grinds it, them out, cash yeah, them, and then just yeah, yeah. And so them. I like bigger chips. I'd rather give a guy, um, say I'm giving a guy twenty grand. I'd rather give him four or five thousand dollar chips than twenty ones. You know, I and we'd have to ask Mr. Curtis if there's a mathematical. You know, what's better for the house? For me, I, I don't. I don't like that many bets. I'd rather he just has to go. Well, but. It's, it's higher variance both ways. Which would yeah. you want? Would you rather I give you twenty one thousand dollar play toy losing chips or four or five thousand dollar play toy losing? And you can't break them down. What's my average bet? If I'm a five thousand dollar a hand player or bigger, I don't care because you're gonna bet it anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna bet it anyway. Okay, so I don't care. Yeah, if I'm but, a thousand dollar a hand player, then obviously I don't want the five thousand dollar chips. But yeah, if it's, okay. if if the if you give me a chip that is bigger than my comfort level. I'll take a chip, but uh, it's not what I want. But, but I mean, for me, um, if you so, you would take whatever. What would just what, which would you rather have? If today we're going to the casino, I'm going to give you twenty ones or four fives. What do you want? How much am I betting? In other, now, for me, it's uh, s- no. If it's just a gift, right now, what, which would you take? Bob, I'm going to give you twenty grand in promo chips. Okay, How do you well, want I'm it? not a table game player. Okay, uh, so, so but I can we break him down into chips. blacks? Uh, no, 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 you can't. Wait, no, wait, no, wait. no, wait. I want him to answer the question. Wait, though. wait, wait, wait. I used to get promo okay. chips at uh, one of the properties, and they would let me go turn them into five dollar tokens for slots. Oh, so I could, you know, which, which a lot of play. What? That's a lot of play. Yeah, but well, in in that, yeah. Yeah, but five dollar tokens. So if if you can do that, I mean, you know, I'd like to do that. But here's the other thing. Let's say let's not talk about twenty grand, but let's say okay. uh, a grand. 
let's say it's a grand, and you okay. said I can give, I, I will give you uh, one one thousand dollar chip, or uh, I mean ten 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 hundreds, ten hundreds. But if you said to me, uh, but I'll give you fifteen hundred of the bullshit chips, right? Three five hundred dollar of the bullshit chips. I'd rather have that. Huh, okay. Than the than the one thousand in the play till you lose chips. Got you. So, but you'd rather have fifteen hundred in is the worth one time bet. Well, it depends on how you play them. They're worth seven fifty. Yeah, well, that's true. You could bet them on roulette and have a good time. For no, it. don't go play red black on that. No, I, no, no, okay, no, no, okay. no, no, no. He I'm would done. not do that. But anyway, okay. that's we're, not, we're off topic here. That's yeah. not the right way to yeah. play those chips. All right, All right, I got to go in a minute. So if okay. you want to do one more question, and this is fun, and I want to come back. This yeah, is, this great, is cool. great. And yes, we our listeners have lots and lots of questions for hosts. So. And where do uh, I hear it? What's the podcast? So, um, well, the we don't have to plug it because they already know. But yeah, they yeah, know, yeah, and yeah, yeah we'll gambling tell you with off an edge dot com is, is gambling with an edge. Okay, yeah. but you can find it in iTunes and Stitcher wherever you get podcasts. Oh, cool, iTunes. Hypothetically, I have a hundred thousand dollar line of credit. It's two o'clock in the morning. I've gone through it all. I want more. You're my host. They call you up, and you make a decision. It happens every weekend. Later, I stiff the casino for whatever reason. How does that affect your life? Well, first of all, the decision is going to be based on one: does he have the money in the bank? Okay, you're a hundred thousand dollar player. You should have low six. And I've testified in these trials before. So, you, if if he didn't have six figures in there, and I give you more money, shame on me. The judge isn't going to rule for me. So you got to have plenty of money in the bank, and you've got to show that you've paid that kind of money off before, and you probably have because I gave you the hundred thousand dollar credit line. The rule of thumb is usually you wouldn't get more than 20%. Why? Because we don't want you to fire out. If a guy stuck a hundred grand and you give him another hundred, he's just going to try to get even. Okay. He's just going to fire big. He's not going to react to small chips. He's just going to fire 5,000, whatever he can, because he's just trying to get out. So I like to give you lower bullets and do you a favor, but I like to, we call it lock it up. Lock up the win, dude. High five. <laughs> live, live another day. And I give you the line, I'm your friend. It's been a long, bad night. We are done here, brother. No more money. Cool. Now, I give you money to answer your question, and then you stiff it. You know, if I'm a salary employee, I get chewed out a little bit, and if I keep making bad decisions, I take away my credit authority, and I don't make those kind of decisions anymore. I'm really, really – that's my in my wheelhouse. I am that guy that makes that decision. One – What's the history? I mean, a lot of factors. What's the history on this guy? Is he new? Two, do I know he's last time it took him a little extra long to pay? He's kind of hurting for money. You know, I'd rather see a guy once a month at a hundred grand than one night I kick his ass for half a million. I never see him again. I don't want to burn you out. In my earlier career, I definitely burned players out. You had a driver's license, I'd give you 25 grand. Remember, I was like, 26 years old, 28 years old at the Hilton, I could give you up to 250000 if there's ink in the pen. That used to be my line. <laughs> Is there ink in the pen? Yeah! I give him credit. So I've grown up a lot. But um, So I don't know if I answered the question. But, you know, now as far as a rep, we don't get paid a dollar till the markers are paid. So a rep's going to be a little bit more conservative. You know, you lose it on Super Bowl and stretch me out for three months. I don't get paid till June or July. Salaried employee gets his little check every two weeks. Steve Sear. Steve at stevesear.com. C-Y-R. C-Y-R. If you try to type it out, your computer will always change that to cry and assume that you, Thank don't, you. Yes. don't know what you're, uh, don't know how to spell. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Uh, really fun. And we um, give you more respect. Now we know you're a train killer. And uh, we're afraid of you. And we'll do this again soon. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Richard. Go out and hit Royal Flushes, everybody. Good day.